Hi, I'm David Woodbridge, a musculoskeletal physiotherapist and consultant at uh, Functional Physio and uh, our med strength um, facility. Today I'm going to talk about uh, muscle balance and uh, the importance of muscle balance and when muscles do become unbalanced, why it can affect your um, uh, gym program, cause injuries, etc. For every muscle um, that does one uh, contraction in a certain direction is another muscle that works opposite it and they work across joints and when they're in balance they equalize the stresses through the joints they um, provide stability for the joint etc but due to various things like our lifestyle and our uh, postural influences from sitting etc the general population develop some significant imbalances if you look at the um, the elbow here with your biceps and your triceps. Whether your biceps contract like that, your triceps do that. So they work and balance it against each other. So if one becomes too strong and the other becomes weak, then you've got a typical imbalance and your elbow joint and your shoulder joint will be in danger of being injured. So one of the most common imbalances we see uh, uh, around the shoulder and neck area, and this is as a direct influence of our sitting posture over a computer for long periods of time and then certain muscles become weak and other muscles become overactive or developed and this creates a lot of problems. And um, the, one of the first ones is the, the common slumped shoulders like this and the forward head posture. So if we have a side view here, you'll see how the head cranes forward like this, the shoulders come forward here. Um, and then as a result, the pec muscles become tight and overactive here the other pectoral muscles develop that and at the back here the muscles here your middle and lower trapezius and rhomboids uh, get put on the stretch and if you put a muscle on a stretch for a long period of time it gradually gets weaker and this is what happens and before you know it you've got this permanently developed posture we need these muscles your middle traps rhomboids lower traps strengthen to pull those back and as you can see here it's pulled your shoulders back stretch the pecs back and he's come into a far better position Here's a good example of somebody that, that down around this level or around their fourth, fifth and sixth cervical vertebrae, the disc spaces become narrowed. They become narrowed because they become worn. And why do they become worn? Because that imbalance of here and back here and the shoulders, when they move in the neck, all of the movement's happening here. And over time that starts to get narrower and narrower and then you get into your 40s and 50s, you start getting a lot more pain here and occasionally you'll start to get nerve pain down here because the canals where the nerves come out have been also narrowed. And that's due to this typical imbalance of the weak upper cervical flexors, lower cervical extensors, your tight pecs and your weak rhomboids and middle and lower traps because you need to get back into here so you can get more movement happening down here and not just here. So what happens if you don't do anything about it? Well, if you are into racket sports uh, like tennis or squash and you start um, doing a lot of movement up in this position here, because you're in this position slumped like this and this shoulder blade is tipped forward, it narrows the space between here and your shoulder bone here, your humerus, and the rotator cuff tendon sits in there and that space becomes narrowed because the shoulder blade's tipped up. And if I show you on a model, this is exactly what I'm talking about here. Here is the shoulder blade, here's the shoulder joint, the rotator cuff sits in here. When that tips up like that, because of this, it narrows that space and you start to get impingement and rotator cuff problems and bursitis problems and then you have to stop your sport. Now should you go and do a gym program and this isn't picked up, and you start doing a lot of strengthening of your chest muscles and not a lot back here, then that's just going to accentuate that and eventually you're going to get further and further injured. So this highlights the importance of having a muscle balance assessment by a trained physiotherapist who has the knowledge of pathology and disease and the aging process and then can match it up with what exercises or strengthening work or stretching work you should be doing out in the gym. You need to know for that individual, what muscles need to be strengthened, what need to be stretched. If you don't and just go do a general program, um, there is a very high chance of you eventually injuring yourself. And a lot of people leave the gym because of that reason. 
in the lower limb here with your buttocks. Um, if you're sitting all day, those muscles don't get weak, they become weak. Then you decide all of a sudden, oh, I want to go, summer's arrived, I want to go out and play tennis, or I want to go running, uh, or um, in numerous activities. But what happens is those muscles now are unable to keep your pelvis stable when you're running, so that generates abnormal forces through other parts of your leg like your knees and uh, your ankle and your Achilles etc. So let's see how this works. Now if we look here at Daffod, now we're looking at his pelvis and his pelvis should be level. All right? What happens is uh, if you stand on your left leg for me Daffod and pop your head and just, just stand up straight for me, hands on hips now what I want you to do is I want you to bend your left knee about 10 or 20 degrees and you'll notice yeah, the pelvis drop there and then come back up again. Just do that again just to highlight that. See how his pelvis drops and then come back up. Let's do the other side and have a look at that too. So it's level there, now it's dropped so he veers over this way. He has to hold his balance, he has to veer over there. That pelvis drops. Now why does that happen? There's a muscle in here called gluteus medius, it's one of your buttock muscles and the posterior fibres and it normally does this, can you see that? it normally does this but when you're standing on your leg it contracts to hold your pelvis level so when you bend like this or running you've got a stable base to generate force all right? so you want him to be able to bend his knee and keep that pelvis absolutely level all right? that way when you're running you can generate force. You can generate force off your leg in straight forward, and you're you're not battling trying to stabilise your pelvis. If we turn around, you'll see the abnormal stresses that can place on your knees and ankles. So, David, if you stand on that leg again, and I want you to bend and drop that pelvis down again, so you can see the imbalance. Now, what happens is because the pelvis drops here, he veers over this way, and his knee goes in here. And that goes in there, the kneecap goes that way, and before you know it, you're starting to get pain under the kneecap or the patella tendon gets overstressed. Um, the same with the Achilles. If we turn around Daph now and uh, try to show that same imbalance, and if you look at the, on his uh, leg here, now when he, when he drops down here, because the knee goes inwards, it creates an L shape in the Achilles, and before you know it, you can get Achilles tendon problems. All right? Now, sure, you might get away with it for the first week or two once you're doing it, but uh, like a, a small problem in a car, you leave it and then it gradually puts more and more stress through other areas of the body and then you start to break down and then you give your fitness program away or you give your tennis away or you give your running away because you've developed this injury. And it's all because you didn't do the preparatory work before. You didn't work on those muscles that were weak that hold you um, in balance when you're running to take the unequal stresses off other parts of your body. And it really highlights the importance why when you join a gym, that a physio should be doing a muscle balance assessment on you to figure out which of your muscles are weak and which of your muscles are tight and looking at your biomechanics and then they can design a proper program for the individual because everybody is different. And that is one of the key factors when you join the med strength gym is the physios do a full muscle balance assessment and they set the program for you, when you before you go out onto the gym floor or you're with your personal trainer. When you see those front on shots of uh, the sprinters at the Olympics, if you look at the guys that uh, are, and the girls that are winning those races and you look at what they're doing, when they're running there's hardly any movement happening between here and here because their muscles that are stabilising their pelvis and shoulders of thoracic uh, hold them upright so they can generate the force off their legs and generate in, in one direction. The moment they start to lose it and fatigue and this starts happening and they have to very, um, go over to the side here to hold their balance then there's no way they can generate the same force through their legs. And you look at the three of them and you can see how easy this guy is doing it. He's upright. There's no movement happening here. His legs are coming up. This guy's struggling. His shoulders are okay, but he's dragging his leg across the other leg here. So he's getting rotation happening. 
and this guy is rotating his shoulders, etc. So that none of them have the same stability as this chap here. He's upright, he can generate more force, you can even see it on his face how much easily he's doing it. And it's a, a lovely picture to highlight what I'm saying about the importance of muscle balance and stabilising these structures when you go out to do your recreational activities, even up to the Olympic level.